Welcome. Before we get started this evening, we would like to make a land acknowledgement. Health and Medicine recognizes and acknowledges that we live and work in the land of the Peoria, Miami, Kickapoo, and Potawatomi nations. These lands were the traditional territories of these native nations prior to their forced removal, and they continue to carry the stories and their struggles for survival and identity. As an organization located in the state of Illinois, we are obligated to hold these histories in our minds today as we talk about community and belonging. Hello and welcome. My name is Maya Bauer. I'm the director of the Chicago Schweitzer Fellows Program. It is my honor to welcome you to this year's celebration of service. This is an opportunity for us to celebrate our graduate students in their year long projects and interprofessional collaboration. This is a tremendous group of students. Tonight, we'll hear from members of our advisory council, um, graduates of our program, funders of this program, as well, of course, as our fellows themselves. I'm certain that you will be inspired, provoked, and excited by their words, their passion, and their work. This year's cohort represents 12 disciplines from 11 different outstanding Chicago area institutions. Gratitude seems like a small word to encompass my appreciation for this year's intrepid, professional, brilliant, and kind Schweitzer Fellows. The work they embarked on is difficult. It's difficult in a typical year, and we all know that 2020 was not a typical year. These fellows move through uncharted territory, rising to the occasion over and over again, at times when it was just challenging to stay alive. Their nimble and incisive project adaptations often involved education about the pandemic, education about the vaccine. They also focused on issues of structural and social determinants of health. Their strength, resilience, and insight informed conversations amongst our cohort around issues of racism as the country decried ongoing state-sanctioned violence, political unrest, and ongoing chronic health inequities magnified by this pandemic. If we are to right injustice as a nation, these are the right people to be stepping into leadership roles. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Rothschild. I am the chair of the Schweitzer Advisory Council and I'm also the president of the Health and Medicine Policy Research Group. It is my real pleasure to welcome you to this celebration of service by our 2021 Schweitzer Fellows, and especially to extend a warm welcome to our fellows. This year, Health and Medicine is celebrating our 40th anniversary as an independent progressive health policy center, an anniversary that also aligns with the 25th anniversary of the Chicago Schweitzer Fellowship. Health and Medicine's mission is to promote social justice and challenge inequities in health and healthcare through policy research, educating the public and policymakers, and collaborating with other social activists. Health and Medicine advocates policies and impacts health systems to improve the health of all people, to achieve our vision, a society free of social inequities, with a healthy population, with everyone able to access high quality health care. Health and Medicine became the home for the Chicago Schweitzer Fellowship back in 1995, when Dr. Lachlan Falro the founder of the program in Boston, came to Chicago to seek sponsorship. He approached the medical schools, other universities, medical societies, and everyone thought Schweitzer was a great idea, but nobody wanted to step up and do the work, which is not unusual in this world. But our founder, Dr. Quentin Young, said no, he could see how the fellowship fit into the work of health and medicine. That for us to build a just society without health inequities required health professionals who were dedicated to a lifetime of service. What could be better than a program founded on the ideals of Albert Schweitzer? But who was this guy? Who was Albert Schweitzer? When I was growing up, my mom used to talk about this guy as a saint 
as someone who dedicated his life to helping the underserved and he had a mission hospital somewhere in Africa and did all kinds of stuff. Um, and to be honest, that's everything I knew about Schweitzer, that he was some kind of saint like Mother Teresa or Dr. King or Jane Addams, somebody who got the Nobel Peace Prize and was like a paragon of human virtue who nobody could ever live up to. So not really a role model because it was too superhumanly perfect to be possible. But like every other human being, there was more to Schweitzer than that. Before we celebrate our fellows, I want to take a moment to talk about his work. He was born in the late 19th century, and like a lot of people who grow up in privileged homes, it took him a while to figure out what he was going to do with his life. He was initially a professor of philosophy and religion who at the age of 30 decided it wasn't enough to keep just talking to people about doing good stuff. He had to show them, he had to act on his beliefs, he had to walk the walk. So he went to medical school and then upon graduation and sadly informed by the colonialism of his day, um, he asked the Paris Missionary Society to send him to their mission at Lamborghini in what is now Gabon, West Africa. The society approved the trip, but they didn't provide him with the money to go on said trip. So, like many of our Schweitzer fellows, only without a GoFundMe account, he raised funds for his trip and for the medical supplies he would need. And then a year later, in 1919, he set off on a raft um, to establish his clinic near the mission post at Lamborghini's, about 14 days downstream of the mouth of the river. And it was there that he stayed for another 52 years through World War I, through World War II, until his death in 1965. He continued this work for over half a century. Now, at some point, everyone asked themselves, am I doing the right thing? Should I keep going on this work that I'm doing? Should I change paths? Schweitzer continued, and I think it was because of what he referred to as his reverence for life, a belief that all living beings were sacred. And he really did mean all living beings. He was a vegetarian in the first part of the 20th century and for the rest of his life. His argument was that by practicing reverence for all life, that we ourselves in, as individuals became more alive. 52 years is what you call a sustained commitment. And that is what this fellowship is really all about. Each of the 30 health sciences students we'll hear from were selected from a pool of over 100 applicants, each dedicated over 200 hours on top of their graduate school curriculum in this painful and challenging year of COVID-19 to their amazing projects. Like Dr. Schweitzer, they seem to have boundless energy and creativity, which they have poured into direct service with vulnerable communities throughout our region. These fellows joined the line of over 700 Chicago Schweitzer fellows over the last 25 years, who have given over 140,000 hours of direct service. Now, as wonderful as that service is, it's not really the point of the program. And now, Schweitzer fellows, it is time for us to finally reveal the point of the work that you have done over the past year. Because a lot of people begin their careers with ideals and hopes of making the world a better place. But it's so easy to lose those ideals with too many people telling you it's unrealistic or not sustainable. There's setbacks, there's COVID-19 and pandemics. And as Schweitzer would say, people who are rolling boulders into the road in front of you to make it that much harder to do what you want to do. Every one of you has had to adapt your projects to the limits imposed by the pandemic. Serving others is exhausting and it can be frustrating. So that's why the key word in this program is not Schweitzer, is not that superhuman dude, it's fellowship. Of coming together in common struggle with your peers who share your values and your beliefs and support you when everybody else tells you it can't be done. Schweitzer didn't go to Lamborghini on his own. 
His wife came with him. He had friends, he had colleagues, he had people in the community there. He brought a piano with him from Belgium all the way to Africa to nurture his spirit and his soul. Schweitzer's lesson is not to be a saint, it's that it's a lifelong process that can be fulfilling and joy-filled and that you have to connect with other people. And that is what this fellowship has been about. All of which is why I hope that tonight is not the end of something, but the beginning. I don't know if you'll be doing this for another 50 years or if your path will go someplace else, but I do know that in this past year, you've poured the foundation for a rich life of service to others and championing the underserved in this world. Now it's time to go out and build your own personal Lamborghini on that foundation. Congratulations to all of you for all that you have done this past year. I know that everyone watching this joins me in wishing you a full and rewarding life of continued service to others. Good evening, Schweitzer Fellows, or Fellows for Life as you become tonight. This year has been the hardest of hard years to be a Schweitzer Fellow. The pandemic has wreaked havoc on just everybody's lives, on the communities that you've tried to support, on your academic experiences, and on the Schweitzer Fellowship. But you all have done it. You have been nimble, you have taken on the challenge, overcome the obstacles that have been in front of you every day, every week in the work that you've tried to do. We've all navigated this year in new ways and, and had to be creative and innovative all the time. And that's really what the Schweitzer Fellowship is about. When we took on the Schweitzer Fellowship in Chicago in 1996, 25 years ago, we saw it as a way to contribute to the education and to the learning of graduate level health professional students so that they could become policy and advocacy leaders alongside being clinicians or public health providers. And in fact, that's what you've had to learn how to do this year. And we're so proud of all of you. And I hope you can sit back tonight and think about what a year it's been for you and how much you've overcome and just feel proud of yourselves. Feel gratitude for what you've done and what you've done together, how you have become interdisciplinary colleagues and, and overcome obstacles together, how you've helped one another to be stronger advocates, to learn more about policy and to be better clinicians if, if that's the area you're going into. Really sit back, enjoy this, take it in and be proud of yourselves. And congratulations from all of us at Health and Medicine. We are so proud to be connected to you. It is now my honor and my pleasure to introduce the very first of several groups of fellows. The way this will work is it will have about eight of the fellows go right now, which means that they will be able to present their work to you in their own words. Then we'll take a break to hear about mentorship and to feature some of the mentors who have worked so hard to support the fellows this year. Then we'll hear from more of our fellows. So I really hope you enjoy this first group of fellows as they tell you about their work. Hello, my name is Tanya Ganom and I am a fourth year pharmacy student at Roosevelt University. Throughout this past year, I have been working with Arab refugees in the southwest suburbs of Chicago. Within this underserved community, there is a strong history of mistrust towards healthcare providers and the healthcare system as a whole. My goal, with the help of the Schweitzer Fellowship, has been to try and bridge the gap between the community and proper access to healthcare in order to give people the opportunity to work towards healthier lifestyles. My project has consisted of creating educational presentations that center around health conditions that commonly affect said population in order to help increase their health literacy, making them strong advocates for their own health. I have had the opportunity to host individual private sessions with community members as well, discussing any health concerns that they may have had and to help guide them towards which steps to take in order to ensure that they are receiving the proper care. Being a first generation Arab American whose parents came to America as refugees, I have a very strong connection to this community and I understand their hesitancies. During one of my very first group sessions, when asking participants for reasons behind their mistrust of healthcare providers, one person told me, going to the doctor isn't something that we like to do. They just want our money. After having voiced this concern aloud, 
many people quickly agreed and shared their own stories. Many discussions have revolved around the lack of empathy in the healthcare field, as well as dismissive attitudes towards patients. By creating a dialogue between patients and healthcare providers, I believe more people would become proactive in seeking the help that they need. Practicing preventative health is critical, and fair access to healthcare, especially for underserved populations, is so essential for positive health outcomes globally. Thank you. Hi, my name is Megan McDermott. I am a second year medical student at Loyola Stritch School of Medicine in Maywood, and I have been a participant in the Schweitzer Fellowship during this last 2020-2021 year, during which I've been partnering with my site, the Quinn Center of St. Eulalia, located in Maywood, one of the western Chicago suburbs. Uh, the Quinn Center is a community center that works to promote peace, justice, and health in the Proviso community, and we've noticed in the past that we've had a lot of outreach specific to our youth and to our families. However, we haven't really had a strategic arm of outreach dedicated to our seniors. And before the pandemic and COVID-19 were even on our horizons, we noticed this need and we wanted to create a stronger sense of belonging and community amongst our seniors and older adults. Combating loneliness and isolation has only become an increased goal as we've seen the effects of the pandemic and especially the effects that they play on our mental and social well-being. During the past year, we've been able to create a network of seniors in our area, reaching out to them with over the phone and then joining every week for our virtual programming. We've been able to teach individuals how to use Zoom to gather every Thursday night for classes in yoga, meditation, fitness, conversations, and even health info sessions and connecting with community resources. We've seen these classes become a really important social support structure for our participants, and we're so happy to have them ongoing into the future. In addition, we've had several special events, including care package distributions over the summer, over the holidays, and one coming up for the spring. And most of all, our, our most important feat of this past year, we were so excited to get more than 50 community members, seniors and caregivers, vaccinated against COVID-19. We are so excited for the community that we've been able to build and the sense of belonging that our participants have said they've been able to find through our programming. And we're really excited to see where programming comes next. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Alston. I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Sociology at Northwestern University. My project is with Teamwork Inglewood, a nonprofit organization dedicated to making sure that Inglewood thrives. In Inglewood, incarceration is a common occurrence as a result of hyper-policing and an uneven social system that makes crime a common means for self-help and survival. Consequently, many residents experience direct and vicarious forms of trauma from the regular crime and violence. To address these issues, I work to design a health promotions campaign to inform residents of the therapeutic services and psychosocial resources they can use to address their trauma. During my time with Teamwork Inglewood, I trained community health navigators to show them how to promote trauma resources throughout the pandemic. We also held virtual meetings, administered ACE surveys to residents, facilitated a healing wall, and used hip-hop as a means of therapy. In these activities, we focused on offering residents the tools to identify trauma symptoms, build inner peace, and maintain mental stability. My experience conducting this project during an ongoing pandemic has shown me the necessity of both resilience and perseverance for health promotions projects and fueled my goal to continue conducting community-based health work with Black communities. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kayla Schmittau and I'm a second year medical student at Rush Medical College. My site is Grace House, which is a residential home for women who are exiting the Illinois prison system, and it provides a wide range of programming to ensure they're set up to have a successful life. My project aimed to provide health education sessions to these women on common chronic health conditions, and my goal was to really increase health literacy as well as promote healthful choices that they can make now to hopefully reduce their risk of these common chronic conditions in the future. I learned so much that I will be taking with me as I become a physician. One is the importance of creating plans that really put each individual person's current situation and access to resources at the forefront to ensure that they are truly sustainable and realistic. And second, the importance of truly getting to know each individual person and giving them a chance to tell their own story.
Some of my favorite parts of this experience have been getting the chance to hear the women's responses to prompts such as, what is something you can do today that you couldn't do five years ago? It gave them a chance to not only be proud of what they've overcome, but it gave me an opportunity to build rapport with them and also to be truly moved and inspired on a weekly basis. As you can tell, I had such an incredible experience with my community, and I feel that that was truly mirrored by my experience with the other Schweitzer Fellows. It's been so nice to be able to work among other change makers who have a vision of the world to be a more just and fair place and are committed to doing the work to make it better in that way. I have had such a wonderful experience and I am so grateful for this opportunity. Hello, my name is Marjorie Remy and I am a student at the University of Illinois at Chicago. My primary site this fellowship year has been Alivio Medical Center. With the current pandemic, the site allowed me to work remotely and to formulate COVID-19 modules for community health workers. These modules basically consisted of information current information regarding the virus, such as modes of transmission, slowing the spread, and how to deal with close family members or friends that has contracted the virus. I also received the opportunity to collaborate with UIC and the Illinois Department of Public Health. This opportunity allowed me to work with high school students to empower them to be community ambassadors. Myself and other fellows host weekly meetings that focuses on the overall impact of the pandemic. Our hope is that through these weekly meetings, the youth will feel confident in going out to their communities to empower the others to learn more about the virus and to also take the vaccine. My experience at Alivio and the IDPH has provided me with great knowledge and understanding on what it means to work within a community. Most importantly, I learned that situations can change rapidly, such as what we've experienced with this pandemic. It is important to be cognizant of our thoughts and feelings so that we can better ourselves and those around us. I am so thankful to have been a part of the Schweitzer Fellowship and I am confident that it has molded me into a better person. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jane Sobchak and I'm a third year dental student at UIC College of Dentistry. During my fellowship, I've been working with Urban Initiatives, a sports-based youth development program for Chicago public school children. With sports on hold for the past year, I've worked with my mentors to pivot the project to virtual oral health presentations. The presentations are intended to be viewed by families in an effort for parents to encourage their children to develop good oral hygiene habits. In addition to working with Urban Initiatives, I've also been spending time at Miles Square Back of the Yards location. Here, I serve as the liaison between a pediatrician and the on-site dentist to make sure children have a dental home and are up to date on their exams and cleanings. Although my fellowship year hasn't gone as planned, I've been gifted the time to really be thoughtful about my projects. A colleague I work with at Urban Initiatives is excited for the girls in the program to see a young female dentist who the girls can look up to and hopefully get them thinking, hey, I can be a dentist too. Hello, my name is David Mata. I am a second year medical student at Loyola University Chicago Stritch School of Medicine. For my Schweitzer Fellowship, I had two projects. One of my projects was with Alivio Medical Center, and the other project was with the Youth Vaccine Corps in collaboration with the University of Illinois at Chicago and the Illinois Department of Public Health. My project with Alivio Medical Center was to develop a bilingual, web-based COVID-19 training curriculum for community health workers. When the COVID-19 pandemic began, it was well established that African Americans and Latinx populations were disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Community health workers, who are lay healthcare workers from the communities that they serve, were proposed as a solution to educate the community about COVID-19 to prevent further spread. Our team developed five different modules based on COVID-19 transmission, diagnosis, prevention, safety guidelines, and mental health. Currently, our web-based training was completed by 145 individuals. My second project was with the Youth Vaccine Corps in collaboration with UIC and IDPH. This project aimed to develop tools and materials on COVID-19 and vaccines led by youth. 
This curriculum will be used to train youth to go into their neighborhoods to educate the community to reduce misinformation about COVID-19 and vaccines. While medical school has a plethora of challenges, my projects constantly reminded me of the reasons why I decided to pursue medicine as a career. I was reinvigorated by the commitment of the teams that I worked with and energized by the passion in youth. My fellowship experience affirmed my desire to continue practicing community work and to have a compassionate, collaborative, humble approach to my practice as a physician. We're going to hear from more of our fellows soon. But before that, I wanted to speak briefly about mentorship. Mentorship is a central part of our program. Our fellows work with our program staff, of course. They also work with a community site mentor, so somebody from that site that they're working with. They work with an academic mentor from their academic institution and a student mentor who's a recent graduate of the program and supports them on a peer level. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our mentors whose insight, logistical support, and problem solving have enabled our fellows to conduct their projects and learn from the communities and learn more about themselves. We're excited to see our fellows growing into the professionals who are the future of our systems of care. And this is really impossible without our mentors. So mentors, thank you so much. Each year, our fellows have an opportunity to um, nominate mentors who have really changed the course of their Schweitzer Fellows year or taught them a lot about themselves. And while we wish we could thank every one of you by name, I also don't want to keep you here all night. So we're going to um, honor just a few with the Arthur Corman Mentorship Excellence Award, named in memory of one of our ardent supporters, past council members, and really important mentor to many, many, many Schweitzer Fellows over the course of many years here at Health and Medicine, Dr. Arthur Corman. Hi, this is Kelly Moore. I just wanted to share my nomination for a mentor award, and that is for my site mentor at Little Brothers Friends of the Elderly, Christine Bertrand. And I really do believe she's the reason I've been able to stick with this fellowship amidst the circumstances of this year. So I wanted you to hear a shout out from me as to why. Um, you know, when we first met back in 2019, she was so quick to welcome me into the organization. I had some initial ideas of how to offer education to elders, but she was very careful to play devil's advocate, seeing the potential while also considering sensitive approaches to make this worthwhile. And looking back, I really appreciate that input. And I think it's the reason I've been successful in, in my efforts this year. She invited me to staff meetings last summer so I could get a better sense of the work that goes on behind the scenes at a large nonprofit. And as I previously alluded to, I really do consider her the force behind what I've been able to accomplish thus far. This includes connecting me with several professionals, looping me in on conversations with staff members, and even sharing a video we created with other Little Brothers chapters, one in the Twin Cities as well as in France, which I think is a really exciting way to, to carry on and share our work. Lastly, I'd just like to add that I admire her leadership style. She voices her perspective, but is also a great listener, very encouraging and, and extremely kind. So thank you, Christine, for all that you do, and most especially for your time and willingness to collaborate with me this year. Christiana has a knack for offering both comfort and critical consideration as she mentors and advises. She has guided a number of students and always presents herself as a resource and offers to go the extra mile with a smile. Hi, my name is Nadia Barrera and I am a doctor of physical therapy student from Governor State University. Throughout this past year, I've been working with high school students at Back of the Yards College Prep in the Back of the Yards neighborhood of Chicago. For my fellowship project, I've created a student program that allows students to learn about various careers in healthcare through different workshops, activities, and guest presentations. The goal of my project was to increase ethnic diversity in healthcare by exposing youth to these careers at a young age. Students have had the opportunity to learn about several careers and learn from many different professionals, including doctors, nurses, physical therapists, dentists, and social workers. Having the opportunity to work with these students and help get them on a path to a future in healthcare has been so rewarding. It has been amazing to hear students share their dreams about pursuing a career in the healthcare field and express their joy of learning something new each week. 
Although this past year has been tough to say the least, my fellowship project has allowed me to grow as a leader and become a positive role model and help make a positive impact in the lives of young people in our community. Our youth are the future and with positive experiences and life lessons, they can achieve the unimaginable. My name is Olivia Keen. I'm a medical student at Rosalind Franklin Chicago Medical School at uh, North Chicago, Illinois. My site was Drexel Counseling and Midway Medical Turning Point, both on the south side of Chicago. I worked with the population of those currently experiencing alcohol and substance abuse. And pre-COVID, my project was geared toward prescription drug education, health literacy classes, wellness checks, and structured counseling for the underserved populations in Chicago's south side who are experiencing substance or opioid abuse. However, during COVID, I seen an immediate community need for proper communication and support. So I worked with my medical director, who was my mentor on site, and she suggested meditation. So we set up a system. The participant comes in, we check their blood pressure, which was always usually high, move to a quiet space, and put on the Let's Meditate app. After we meditated for two minutes, we rechecked their blood pressure, and it was almost always dropped. The learning lesson we were trying to get across was the impact of coping mechanisms. Substance use is unfortunately an outlet and coping mechanism for far too many people in this country, especially in underserved areas like Southside Chicago. I did not expect my participants to be completely weaned off substances after or even during my project. My only expectation was to expose them to another outlet and show them immediate gratification, like lower blood pressure numbers, and turn it into something they look forward to doing when they came in to see me. My other goal was to create a relationship with my community so that there is trust from the beginning. The community unfortunately had been exploited and suffer an immense amount of healthcare disparities because of their illness, and that has led to mistrust toward healthcare providers. So I created this safe space Zoom meeting where each participant could call me and simply vent, share excited news, share sad news, or whatever it was. I just wanted it to be a positive experience because I knew that COVID was tough for everybody. And if you add substance abuse with it, it can become suffocating. And I wanted to be the support I would want if I was in that situation myself. This was an unusual but amazing and life-changing experience. And I thank the Albert Spicer Fellowship Chicago chapter for this opportunity. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Camardo and I am a doctoral student at the University of Illinois at Chicago, working on my doctorate of nursing practice to be a certified nurse midwife. For this fellowship, I partnered with IGRO, which is a nonprofit in Inglewood, Chicago. IGRO is known for their Peace House, which promotes holistic healing and combines community development with individual empowerment. My original project was to lead their women's group and provide education on sexual and reproductive health. But when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, many Black communities, like the one in Inglewood, got disproportionately hit hard, not only with COVID-19 cases, but death rates as well. Many live in poverty and struggle to provide food, clothing, and adequate housing for their families. They have lack of access to health care and have many health disparities. Many of the people that I talk to in the community are also victims of violence within the community. And this all became very clear to me over the past year. My project shifted to meet the needs of the community, and this consisted of organizing and doing bi-weekly wellness calls for over 200 community members. So this, this included screening for COVID-19 and also scheduling appointments to get community members tested and arranging drop-offs for supplies like food, masks, hand sanitizer, and other cleaning supplies. During the election, I also helped many of our community members get registered to vote, scheduled flu shots, and also included a lot of women's health education and promotion, and worked with many of the community members on managing their medical and mental health needs during the past year. I'm finishing up the year by working with Heartland Alliance to get our communities vaccinated for COVID-19. This has been very uplifting, but also challenging. And while this year has been unpredictable and heavy, working with iGro has been an unforgettable experience. I know I will take everything I have learned over the past year with me as I work with underserved communities as a new midwife. Hi everybody, my name is Marissa DuPont. I'm a second year medical student at Chicago College of Osteopathic Medicine. 
I've been a Schweitzer Fellow for the past year, and my site is Burr Ridge Middle School, which is actually the middle school that I attended growing up. Um, for the past year, we've been running a after-school club, which was an online community space for the seventh and eighth graders to come together and learn and have fun after a day of e-learning and try to maintain some sense of normalcy during this past challenging year. Um, I had so much fun learning with them and we covered a lot of topics together and we played a lot of games together and I really found a lot of joy in that. I also worked with the Syrian American Medical Society to further the advertisement and usage of a free clinic that's actually run out of the same school. Um, and I really got to hone some of my clinical learning skills there as well. Some things I learned from the past year are that we are resilient when we come together as a community and we can make it through a lot. People are, are fundamentally good and, and want to help each other and all it takes is being asked sometimes. And, and most importantly, I learned that sometimes it's really good to look at situations from the perspective of a 12 year old. It was really enlightening to work with seventh and eighth graders through a year of an election and a pandemic, and they really brought a fresh perspective to my life. I would like to really give a big thank you to Dr. Tom Schneider, who was my site sponsor, Ms. Carol Collins, who I worked with directly with the children, um, and Dr. John Casimos, who gave me invaluable guidance over the past year. Thank you to Maya and Angela for helping us do this, and it's been a really fun ride, and I will miss all of my time that I spent with the Schweitzer program. Thank you. Hi, my name is TJ Harper, and I'm a current PhD student at the University of Chicago Crown Family School. This past year, I spent time working with the Chicago Urban League, and my project specifically focused on the intersection of uh, mental well-being and financial health. Initially, uh, I wanted to focus on addressing large social issues such as the racial wealth gap and um, the implications of generational wealth. Of course, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic occurred and I had to drastically uh, change courses of the project. And at that point, uh, it then became where I shifted gears to uh, you know, have conversations and workshops with participants around um, access to resources such as the eviction moratorium or um, expanded unemployment insurance benefits. And just in having these conversations and workshops, I learned so much from the participants in terms of their lives, their stories, their struggles, their upheaval. Um, and similarly, you know, to the cohort of fellows this past year, just um, from everyone who is from different disciplines and has a different outlook and perspective about um, going about um, certain conversations and topics, this has been really a remarkable experience. And I, I really don't have good words to truly describe the impact that this fellowship uh, has had not only on my career, but also around my life and how I just think about things. My name is Loisa de Jesus. I'm graduating with a master's degree in general psychology from Roosevelt University. And I'll be starting my PhD in counseling psychology at Arizona State University in the fall. For my project, I partnered with the Segundo Ruiz Belvis Cultural Center. Uh, based in Chicago's Hermosa community, Ruiz Belvis is the oldest Puerto Rican cultural center and one of only a handful in the country to focus on the African roots of Puerto Rican culture. Uh, when lockdown began, I realized that the project I had proposed would need to change. The youth needed a safe place where they could process what was going on around them, where they could be angry sad, confused, frustrated, where they could cry, yell, scream, and most importantly, share with others. So every Friday, we meet virtually for two hours. For the first hour, I lead a round of check-ins. We discuss issues, we problem solve, and we set specific actionable goals for the next week. For the second hour, I open it up for you to chat. Some days, they spend the entire second hour discussing the newest TikTok videos or Netflix shows. Sometimes that escape into sort of normal social time is what they need most. 
but most sessions that second hour is where the real issues are talked about that second hour is where the real work is done i've seen these youth support each other i've seen them start to learn to ask for help when they need it i've seen them find strength within themselves and within the group i couldn't be more proud of the youth and i'm working with my site and my faculty mentors to select an appropriate replacement so the program doesn't end when I leave. This project has reinforced the importance of listening to the community. It also reaffirmed my belief in the power of collective healing through group work. This will be my focus at Arizona State University and in my future career. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Carey and I am a second year medical student at Loyola University Chicago. My site is the Rush Social Work and Community Health Department and my project goal is to increase referrals to free and evidence-based chronic disease self-management workshops for older adults. I plan to do this through outreach in the west side of Chicago and the western suburbs. With the pandemic, my plan shifted a lot, so currently the bulk of my time is spent as a tech assistant for one of these workshops which are now held virtually. Many of the participants haven't used Zoom before, so I help walk them through that process so they can participate. Also, I work with the Health Justice Project and Circle, which is the COVID Equity Response, COVID Equity Response Collaborative at Loyola. Um, and in that role, I perform intakes with lower income older adults living in areas like Berwyn and Maywood. That's where Circle has some of their free testing sites. Um, and we discuss any social or legal needs that they may have and that they would like assistance with. So that's things like food insecurity or how to navigate an eviction notice or a utility shutoff. During those calls, it also allows me an opportunity to talk about the Rush workshops when it's um, appropriate to someone's situation. So that's a really awesome way to tie it back to my original project goal. Uh, after those intakes, I then compile um, resources that are specific to their situation and I write it up in a pretty detailed letter and um, provide that to them and hopefully it's very helpful. I just want to finish by saying that I'm incredibly grateful for this opportunity and even though what I actually did is a lot different than what I imagined a year ago, I still feel like I really came out with a lot of um, knowledge and skills that I wanted to get out of the process. So I feel like I better understand how to be an advocate, I better understand how to work with my community instead of for my community, and also how to navigate challenges, which inevitably always come up. So thank you so much. Hi, my name is Amy Paul and I'm a second year medical student at the Strip School of Medicine. For my fellowship project, I partnered with my school, Loyola, and Housing Forward, a local nonprofit, to build up a street medicine team with the goal of expanding care for people experiencing homelessness in West Cook County. Overall, this year has been an amazing learning opportunity in what it means to do community service. Although the COVID pandemic definitely threw a wrench in our initial plans with Housing Forward, it also gave us an opportunity to take a step back and take a larger, more holistic view of health for clients. I started my own fellowship project by delivering meals to clients during the first peak of the pandemic and by assembling house to home kits for recently housed clients. Although these tasks didn't initially seem very health focused, I now know they played a large role in the everyday health and wellness of clients, especially during a time when we were being asked to shelter in place. Since then, I've been able to work with our street medicine team to expand medical clinic access for clients and to start health education programming for clients around topics such as COVID safety or healthy eating. I was also recently able to help out at a Housing Forward vaccination fair, and it was an amazing opportunity to help guide clients to taking this first step to bettering their own health and the um, health of their loved ones. Overall, I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to be a part of the Schweitzer Fellowship. Not only have I been able to form wonderful connections with my own community, but I've also learned so much from my um, Schweitzer cohort and from the larger Schweitzer community. My name is Jesse Jinru Tan. I'm a part-time MPH student at UIC, and I'm also a full-time clinical social worker. My project this year was with Chinese American Service League located in Chinatown, which serves Chinese immigrants. This fellowship year, I completed a mental health assessment and service project in the Chinese community to better address the unmet community mental health needs. I have been working with Chinese immigrants' families over four years. Our prevention-initiated home visiting program is a state-funded 
program comes alongside parents to ensure their children are healthy, happy, and prepared for school. Services are offered across Chinese communities for parents, grandparents, and children from age zero to three. Previously, the main focus of the program was the development of children. Many assessments, including age and stage questionnaire and social emotional screening, were conducted to make sure that each child's development is on track. However, very little attention was put on caregivers' mental health status. I expanded our current services and offered more supports for caregivers. I did bi-weekly virtual home visits for each family. I also initiated bi-weekly family engagement activities for caregivers through Zoom, where they can meet with each other and learn from each other. This experience has confirmed my desire to serve immigrants and help them to maintain a healthier mental health status. Great work, fellows. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Sonia Oyola, a member of our advisory council, faculty at the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine, many time mentor to Schweitzer Fellows and a supporter of our program. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sonia Oyola, and on behalf of the advisory council, I'd like to thank you and welcome you once more to this year's Schweitzer Fellowship Celebration of Service. It is an honor and a privilege to share a few words with you this evening about a commitment to service, about a strengths-based approach, and how the fellowship aligns with my own values and mission. I'll start by saying that I am the direct beneficiary of this type of fellowship. I'll tell you why. From a young age, immigrating here from Colombia, what I experienced and what my mother and father experienced uh, were all of the classic challenges of, that immigrants face. We were economically disadvantaged. Uh, we had um, a foreign language that many did not understand or speak. We had a, uh, a different hue to our skin, a color that separated us. And in all of that, in the middle of all of that, I still got to witness extraordinary service. My mother and father did not see themselves as weak. They saw themselves as blessed. They were grateful. And with that grateful heart, they served the community. They volunteered at their local church every Sunday. Every Sunday, my mother cooked. She delivered. She visited at the hospital. And so I am incredibly blessed. I uh, have been incredibly blessed to have witnessed that. They did it because they, they understood that there was a need and they understood that in order to reduce that need and reduce that disparity, it required the commitment and the efforts of another. They felt so lucky to be that, to be that person. So my work uh, is founded there. It started there. Uh, that foundation was solidly built and the career that I've, I've been blessed to have because of the support of many, many, many mentors and friends and family members, that career embodies one of service, one that says there's a need and I am blessed and grateful to help reduce it. So how does the fellowship align with that? with that value, with those values, with that mission. Well, the fellowship's mission is to create leaders that have a grateful heart, high integrity, who have the skills, the passion, the advocacy uh, to help support the community, uh, to identify not just a need, but a strength. To identify a strength and to augment that strength. This is what we get to witness being on the council. 
we have been blessed to notice and see how the fellows with a strength-based approach work alongside the community to say, we're not here to fix. We're here to help flourish and nourish what you already have, which is great capacity and great, great self-efficacy. This uh, aligns so deeply with my own mission as a family medicine physician and as an advocate, as a researcher, as a teacher, as a mother. I am honored again to share these words with you. I hope that they have helped you see why uh, I am on this council and, uh, and why the fellowship is so precious and to be celebrated every year and especially this incredible 25th year. So on behalf of all of us, uh, I thank you. I hope you are well. I wish you well and I wish your family members and loved ones well. Before we hear from our final group of fellows, I know everyone's anxious for that. I'd like to take a moment to thank our funders. Our program simply would not exist without the generous support of foundations, academic partners, and community members who believe in our work and believe in service and social justice. We want opportunities like this to be available for aspiring health professionals for years to come. Thank you so much to our funders. We'd like also to ask you to consider making a contribution to our work. Easy links are available in the chat. As we are embarking on our 25th year, this year as a program in Chicago, we ask that you consider making a $25 sustaining monthly donation or whatever amount fits your budget. That way we can sustain this program for another 25 years to come. One way to support the work of the program as well is by supporting a named fellowship. This can be done as one person in, in memory of somebody or as a collective group of folks. This year's named fellows honor Dr. Tariq Ibrahim, Dr. Leslie Nichols, and the generous support of Bob and Carol Perlman. Thank you so much. It is now my pleasure to introduce Gayla Brockman, President and CEO of Michael Reese, a longtime supporter of our program. Hello, Schweitzer Fellows, and congratulations to the 2020-2021 graduating fellows. I'm Gayla Brockman, President and CEO of the Michael Reese Health Trust, and I so wish I could be there to congratulate you in person. Our mission at Michael Reese is to advance equitable health access to health solutions for all Chicagoans. We do this by caring for the vision of Michael Reese Hospital's Jewish founders and the generations of leadership they inspired. And it's why for the last 22 years, we've been partnering with Health and Medicine Policy Research Group to implement the Albert Schweitzer Fellowship. It's because we believe you are the future. You are the next generation of leaders who will help us achieve health equity. During this past year of your direct service, you got to see how inequity impacts the least resource communities. I bet you learned quite a bit from this experience working with people who may have different strengths and may have different experiences than you do. What you gained, that ability to listen and to partner will be invaluable as you pursue your, your healthcare career. Our work at Michael Reese focuses on the most pressing health challenges facing Chicagoans. And we don't do this work alone. In fact, we partner with people like you, healthcare students, healthcare providers, grassroots coalitions, community organizations, advocates, and government leaders to understand and acknowledge the gaps, connect people across the sectors, and align resources and priorities to improve health. Now, we all know that access to a good job is a critical social determinant of health. We see that across many of the areas in which we work, whether it be homelessness, domestic or community violence, or even access to good oral health care. Secure, consistent employment is linked to longer, healthier lives. 
with the health sector being one of the largest employers year after year, we work to strengthen career pathways that can help build a skilled, resilient, and inclusive healthcare workforce. Now the challenges facing Chicago to achieve equitable health access are not unique. We see these in every city, every state, every country, and even across the continent. That's why we need people like you. We are so excited to welcome you into this work and to work alongside you to build equity so that people may live healthier lives and create healthier communities across the world. Now, almost more than a year ago, Chicago was placed under a mandatory shelter in place order as COVID-19 began to spread. Those of us in healthcare knew and know that black, brown, indigenous, uninsured, and other disinvested communities are consistently most at risk for becoming sick, losing their jobs, losing their homes, losing their health care, and ultimately losing their lives. Well, COVID-19 laid that completely bare for everyone to see. COVID-19 exposed the complete lack of infrastructure in our city and in our country. Now, a year later, we've lost over half a million lives. A grossly disproportionate number of those American lives have been people of color. Well, the last year has been heartbreakingly painful for all and life-changing for many of us. The clear evidence of our lack of investment in public health has stimulated innovation, innovation in an unprecedented level. We're seeing community health centers and hospitals deploy technological advancements through telehealth and telebehavioral therapy. We're seeing the scientific research industry and big pharma collaborate to achieve miraculous advancements in mRNA vaccines and the amazing partnerships they form to disseminate the vaccines to communities as quickly as possible. There's a call for the first time in a long time to make public health front and center. When did you ever think when you started your beginning healthcare career that the words public health infrastructure would be uttered so fre frequently? Well, we're seeing concrete evidence of big change right now. The Biden administration signed the American Rescue Plan, which includes $20 billion for a national vaccination program. And in that, it includes funding for 100,000 public health workers to be employed in this effort. Several of the Schweitzer Fellows developed the COVID-19 Youth Vaccine Ambassador Corps, where youth are exposed to what working in healthcare could be and mentored and influenced by you. We see it in the Chicagoland Vaccine Core Partnership currently being incubated at Michael Reese, where with our partners, we are working to create a pathway for trusted messengers to become paid permanent assets in Chicagoland communities. And though our weaknesses as a society have been exposed, I have not lost hope. I see innovation and a healthy change rising from the crisis. And I see the future in each of you, and the future is indeed bright. Together, we are building something great. Together, we're going to build something better. We're building a society that will ensure the public health infrastructure is in place for all people to live healthy lives. I am so proud and excited to build this alongside of you. Thank you, and please be well. Thank you so much, Gayla. It is now my honor to introduce our last group of 2020-2021 Schweitzer Fellows who will share with you about their projects and their fellowship year in their own words. My name is Kelly Moore and I'm a nurse practitioner student at the University of Illinois Chicago campus. The organization I worked with over the past year is called Little Brothers Friends of the Elderly and I really have come to value the work they do providing space for conversation, companionship, and celebration with men and women over the age of 70 who are living alone here in Chicago. Last spring I got involved in their visiting volunteer program and was paired with a handful of elders who I've been calling weekly to bi-weekly over the course of the year. I also helped with group calls last summer, care package deliveries around major holidays, and we hosted a virtual Day of the Dead Memorial Celebration in November. 
which was one of the most meaningful moments for me since we were able to provide a space, even amidst the pandemic, to process and grieve the loss of elders in our community together. I also had a unique opportunity to start a more virtual initiative than Little Brothers has ever done in the past to provide support and education to fellow volunteers. And it was through this that we provided some resources on mental health and most recently to share an interview with a nurse practitioner where we talked about advanced care planning and some commonly misunderstood terms related to end of life care. You know, my own conversations with elders informed the talk and our hope is that even beyond this fellowship year, the recording can help spread awareness about these discussions um, and, and advanced directives as well. There have been many challenging aspects to working with this community amidst stay-at-home recommendations, which I won't go into because I know everyone understands. What I will say is there were many days I felt incredibly fulfilled because of a connection I made, and honestly just inspired by the resiliency of this community. Uh, one other thing to add is the willingness of people to open up over time, even over the phone. And it taught me that circumstances outside our control can be frustrating, but that connection really does matter no matter what it looks like. Hello, my name is Pearl Ugudike and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Illinois, Chicago. My site this year for my Swightshire Fellowship was Girls in the Game, where I've been lucky enough to be a uh, instructor for fitness, health, and leadership classes for girls throughout the Chicagoland area. By far my favorite part of my fellowship this year has just been the opportunity for immense learning and growth. Um, I've learned so much from the girls that I have been instructing. Um, it's been pretty crazy. I've also been able to learn a lot from the Schweitzer staff, um, Maya and Angela, as well as the many incredible, incredible individuals who are my co-fellows in this program. Um, I'm so grateful for all of you guys for inspiring and improving me throughout the course of the year and peppering what could have been um, a, a, what was a tough year for most. Um, you guys peppered it with lots of moments of laughter and joy, and um, I'll be forever grateful for that. Hi, I'm Coco Severin. I'm a current fourth year student at Rush Medical College. Over the past year, my Schweitzer Fellowship has been with the Night Ministry, a nonprofit that provides resources and outreach to the homeless communities throughout Chicago. Um, over the past eight months, I've been working with the street medicine team every week through the Night Ministry to provide resources such as clothing, food, um, harm reduction supplies, medical care, and prescription refills to these communities. Most important, Importantly, during this time, I've also been interviewing these clients to learn about the barriers that they face and the traumas that they're coming from um, and what that means when they seek health care and what barriers are they facing when they um, are trying to access care. Specifically, I didn't want to move forward assuming what um, I knew what was best to improve their care, but to give them their own voice to, to let us know what barriers that they're facing. Um, my project has taught me so much and it really has great taught me that everyone has their own story and the current healthcare system that we have isn't quite equipped to take care of this homeless community. Um, I've learned individuals are facing so many barriers that we're not used to in our own everyday lives, such as having financial means to get to doctor's appointments. They don't have cell phones to always remind them of doctor's appointments. Um, so these kind of barriers greatly hinder their care and improving their care. Um, otherwise, the Schweitzer Fellowship has taught me a lot about myself in terms of confidence to be able to do this project. They provided great resources and community a community of support to help me get this far. Um, we as young professionals have such a great ability to create change and we can all use our own privileges to help those um, who are otherwise don't have a voice to do so. Hi, my name is Emmelyn Pitlawani. I'm a second year PA student at Rush University. Um, I applied to the Schweitzer Fellowship because I wanted to impact the community's health outside of the hospital. In my role as a future physician assistant, I will be diagnosing and treating patients um, in various clinical settings in the hospital but I really wanted to better understand my immediate community and their specific needs better. So my project is a mental, social, and emotional uh, wellness enrichment for high school students at UIC College Prep. And um, over the past year, we've discussed these topics 
um, and have really learned more about how to abolish mental health stigmas. So over the past year, we've discussed various mental illnesses, including um, their signs and symptoms, um, some common like stigmas that people have towards mental illness, and we've discussed how to seek help and how to support someone um, in their lives who has a mental health issue. Um, we also talked about how to constructively deal with stress, including like how to organize themselves, how to deal with stressful situations, and how to respond to others um, in difficult situations. So I created this project specifically because I wanted to help abolish these mental health stigmas. Um, and these students at this age are really impressionable and they're really just starting to figure out what they believe, what they think about the world. And so I thought this would be a really great age to talk about all these topics with them. Um, so obviously like the rest of the world, I couldn't have imagined that COVID would have happened. Um, but I think that provided a really great opportunity for me in this group to discuss, you know, the current climate with students. There has been a large mental health crisis as a result of COVID-19. And so this group provided a really safe space for students to discuss how they were feeling, discuss these mental illnesses, um, and just really support each other. And I was very impressed um, by their resilience, their insight, uh, their dedication to each other, and also just their dedication to their own overall wellness. Um, so this fellowship really has taught me so much, so many invaluable lessons, but overall I think the biggest takeaway that I have from this fellowship um, is how to really promote healthy living in the community outside of the walls of the hospital. Um, and that is something that I'm very thankful for. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Amira Kefi and I'm currently a PhD candidate at University of Illinois at Chicago in bioengineering department. I am very happy and proud um, to be selected as a Schweitzer Fellow for the year 2020-2021. In this past year, I spent time working on my community service project with the Cook County uh, Juvenile Temporary Detention Center, specifically with my mentor, Philippe Maglore, and this project is addressing um, educational disparities uh, to support minorities' mental health and uh, well-being and especially financial health. So the project is about teaching data science for juveniles and um, incarcerated people. Uh, so this project uh, needs a lot of skills to be learned and initially we planned to teach it using the available computers in the center. But as the COVID hit, we were not able to go there and uh, teach. So I had to adjust and I had to collect donations and um, buy laptops for the juveniles. And we were able to start the class uh, in this uh, past January. So we had to run through a lot of challenges and um, a lot of um, learning skills that I had to teach to the juveniles, but I also learned myself. So um, when I started the class, I was happy to learn a lot about the online teaching and its challenges and also the population specific needs and how I can adjust and manage with the available resources. I'm John Hawkins and I'm a medical student at University of Chicago. My site is Black and Pink. It's an abolitionist organization that supports and advocates for currently and formerly incarcerated trans, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and queer community members. From what we've heard from our community, um, they're disproportionately affected by COVID-19 with worsening already inhumane conditions inside, additional barriers to accessing necessary hygiene products and to accessing non-COVID-19 related medical care, um, and further isolation for a group that's already marginalized. After it was announced that incarcerated people in Illinois would have access to the COVID-19 vaccine during phase one, we wanted to provide support to community members so that they could best make informed decisions for themselves at this crucial time uh, and get information 
from somewhere that they trust. Uh, so I developed educational resources and an outreach program that aimed to communicate evidence-based information about COVID-19 and the vaccine in a way that hopefully also recognize the trauma that they endure within the carceral system and the medical system inside that wasn't serving them. Uh, I used mailings to follow up with individual members answering COVID-19 and health related questions and also had the opportunity to work with some recently decarcerated members, helping them to access resources, get to appointments and obtain essential items such as transit cards and groceries in a world that looks very different than how they knew it before. I'm Ramita Lee, chiropractic medicine intern at National University of Health Sciences in Lombard, Illinois. My fellowship project is Champions for Change, a weekly webinar hosted Mondays via Zoom at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. Champions for Change focuses on health education, equity, and lifestyle promotion, and its primary goal is to improve a sense of agency in management of one's own health. This is promoted by encouraging each attendee to establish at least one specific measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based or one healthy SMART goal. Additionally, goals are to improve health literacy, promote health le healthy lifestyle factors that may reduce risk of chronic and preventable diseases, and address social determinants of health. Greater Open Door Missionary Baptist Church in the North Lawndale community of Chicago is the host site for Champions for Change and members of North Lawndale, specifically African-American adults ages 30 to 60, were encouraged to attend. Having to facilitate a virtual project due to COVID actually provided farther reaching tools for community engagement and several attendees relayed my project format offer a great reason for getting up on Mondays, one they both enjoyed and benefited from. Members also share information like vaccination sites and the Schweitzer program has allowed me to make new connections with leaders of health related initiatives in North Lawndale like Pastor Rashona Fitzpatrick of Stone Temple Missionary Baptist Health Initiatives and Dr. Carolyn Vassell of I Am Able Center for Family Development Inc. Lastly, by encouraging each attendee to develop at least one SMART goal, all have reported at least one healthy lifestyle improvement, such as increasing intake of water, whole plant-based foods, physical activity, and practicing stress management. The Swicer Fellowship has allowed me to support the sense of agency journeys of others. For this, I am truly grateful. Hi everyone, my name is Bernice Mann, a pharmacy fellow in the 2013 to 2014 cohort of the Chicago Area Schweitzer Fellowship. Uh, we wanted to give you a warm congratulations um, to this year's graduating 2020 to 2021 cohort of Schweitzer Fellows. Uh, it really has been a landmark year where your group has overcome logistical challenges that arguably no other cohort has had to face over the last 24 years. And your fortitude is setting a prime example for the fellows who will be joining us as we enter into the program 25th year. Thanks, Bernice, for that. So I'm just going to chime in. Hi, everybody. My name is Olivia Phillips. I was a public health professional or public health fellow from the 2018-2019 cohort. And now I'm also a Schweitzer's Fellow for Life. Um, I would just want to echo the thoughts shared by Bernice and congratulating you on completing the fellowship, especially in the midst of the pandemic, um, and now welcoming you into this amazing community, the Fellow for Life Network. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of background, so the Chicago Area Schweitzer Fellows for Life program is a network of Schweitzer alumni committed to continuing their engagement in service and the ideals of Dr. Schweitzer in health and medicine. Um, so this program or the Fellows for Life program aims to further engage alumni in the ideals of uh, Albert Schweitzer, provide opportunities for networking, um, provide you opportunities for continued community engagement and service, um, promote leadership and professional development, and really lastly, give you a sense of camaraderie. So you'll uh, continue to be able to be a part of a group of like-minded people. Um, and just as a fellow, you'll continue, it'll just support you in your goals and um, You'll be able to attend events, interview prospective fellows, share in opportunities, participate in workforce activities. Um, of course, now it's virtual, but that's fine. And then also apply for secrets and just staying connected. So it's an amazing, amazing network. So welcome. 
Thanks, Olivia. My name is Kelly Bozak, and I'm a social work fellow from the 2014-2015 cohort, and it's such a passionate and excited fellow for life. Um, even though I'm living in Oregon now, I'm still really involved in the Chicago chapter, and so it's an excellent piece of information to have as you move about and um, pursue other activities in professional and personal development, you can always remain connected. Um, as Olivia and Bernice are saying, as a fellow for life, you always have the opportunity to, to continue to grow through both local and national networks. And thinking about what do you love best about being a fellow? What are you going to miss from this last fellowship year? You can preserve those best parts and explore and expand your network as as you as you're now welcomed into the Fellows for Life. Um, the Chicago chapter has a Fellows for Life steering committee um, that is always accepting of new members and meet several times a year to plan events for Fellows for Life and to connect with current fellows. Um, since 2007, the chapter has been very active and we've hosted lots of things like Olivia shared and including other fun events like book clubs, happy hours, annual service days and volunteer opportunities, quarterly networking events. And we really, really encourage our Fellows for Life to still be involved in service and considering the seed grants, it can, you can, can you use that to continue your project? Um, we have also, a lot of us have attended both local and national conferences that connect us with Fellows for Life um, who are from other chapters, throughout the country or who've done their fellowship um, at Lambrene. And so we've attended both summits in Tulsa, Boston, and we even had one here right here in Chicago just a few years ago. Um, so don't forget to always put your fellowship and your membership in the Fellows for Life Network on your resume, because wherever you go, you will find a fellow. So thank you so much and congratulations. Welcome. Thank you so much to our tremendous fellows, to our advisory council, to our fellows for life, to our mentors and to our funders, and to all of you for showing up tonight. Please do join us in our networking room. This way you'll be able to find an opportunity to speak with some of the fellows who you've heard tonight and ask them about their work or just meet somebody new. So we're hoping you will join us. Find that link in the chat. And finally, I just wanted to say thank you um, for considering becoming a donor to the program. A donation of any amount, especially when made monthly, can really help us to ensure prolonged success and our ability to work with hundreds more young professionals in the Chicagoland area as they make meaningful change in our world. Think about making a simple five or $10 monthly donation or be in touch with us if you'd like to make a substantial gift, make a named fellowship or set up a matching grant. We look forward to seeing you in the networking room. Thank you for coming and a huge congratulations to our brand new class of Fellows for Life. Congrats.